What more could I have to walk to my mind? Same message, like I told you, they have the same message. It was a message, it was a time when God is asking his people, what have I done to you? What have I not done to you? That you are doing this to me. And so the word of God to say, For I brought you up from the land of Egypt. I redeemed you from the house of bondage. And I said before you all, Aaron and Miriam, all my people, remember now what Bala King of Moab answered, and what Bala son of Beor answered him from Acacia Group to Giga, that you may know the righteousness of the Lord. God is recounting his deeds to his people. And thus asking them the question what have they tied down to you that you are doing this to? So the question we are asking ourselves this morning is, what has God shown you about himself? The name of my God means Yahweh, who is like Yahweh. That is the meaning of uh, the, uh, the, name of, the name of the prophet Peter. Who is like Yahweh. And so like I said, our spiritual devotion is by and large dependent and shaped by our understanding and perception of God. Now, in the book Prophets and Kings, there's a chapter, chapter 26, really chapter 26. Uh, the topic is Behold the God. Let me get there. What I will soon. So like I say, you know, even as I'm quoting from Isaiah and even uh, the spiritual prophecy in the context of the book of Isaiah, just know that it's one and the same word, period, context, message to God's people. Now, prophets and kings are over time. The chapter is 26. Uh, this is how the chapter begins. Behold the God. That was the message that Isaiah brought to his, uh, he, he presented to God's people. Now listen to how the Bible is. In Isaiah's day, the spiritual understanding of mankind was dark through misapplication of God. Did you get that? Let me repeat it. In Isaiah's day, the spiritual understanding of mankind was dark through the misapplication of God. Of God. Lord and Satan sought to lead men to look upon their creator as the author of sin and suffering and death. Those whom he had first deceived imagined that God was hard and exalted. They regarded him as watching to denounce and condemn, and willing to receive the sinner so long as there was a legal excuse for not helping him. The law of love by which heaven is ruled have been misrepresented by the heart deceiver as a restriction upon men's happiness. A very some law from which they should be allowed to escape. He declared that each precept could not be obeyed and that the penalties of God's trans the, the penalty the penalties of transgression were bestowed arbitrarily. In losing sight of the true character of God of Jehovah. The Israelites were without excuse. So this was the problem in the land of Israel. God's people had a wrong understanding of who God was. And this is what led them into idolatry. Something has led them to see God as what? As exacting and hard. And thus led them to see his laws as what? Restricted upon them. And so what resulted? They went to seek freedom. They went to seek worship in other gods. And thus they got into idolatry. And the genesis of the problem was a misapprehension of God. Your spiritual life, your spiritual devotion, and entirely your life is shaped by your understanding of God. 
And even later on in the afternoon, you realize that even, furthermore, even how we treat other people is actually also dependent on our understanding and our relationship with God. Think about it. What made the prodigal son to go out to seek him? His perception about his God, about his father. He got to a point where he thought, you know, the laws and the governors of his father were restricting upon himself. He wasn't happy. And so that's, he was led to do what? To get to a point of seeking to go out and seek freedom. And enjoy that. It began with him misunderstanding what? His father. Interestingly, it's the same problem with the elder son. He also did not understand his father. And so it's the same question, it's, it's the same problem with Israel, and even with us. It begins with us misunderstanding God. And let's go to the book of Hosea, chapter 6. Hosea, chapter 6. And the verse is 6. Listen to what the Bible says. For I desire, like I said, Hosea and Mika and Isaiah, the minister during the same period. So they both the same said message to Israel. Now listen to Hosea's version. He says in verse 6 of chapter 6. For I desire mercy and not what? Sacrifice. Now if you go back to the book of Mika, the chapter 6 now, verse 7, Say, what shall I bring to the Lord? Shall I come with sacrifice? Shall I give what? My firstborn. You see, also in the same message that Hosea is giving to his people. And then God is telling his people, I do not desire what? Your sacrifice. This is what I want from you. I want mercy. Notice the second portion of that text. And the knowledge of who? And the knowledge of God. More than what? More than bad offerings. I don't know if you've seen a striking parallelism between what in, in what Jose is addressing and what Mika is addressing. Same thing, same problem. And so God is like, I do not desire the bad offerings. I do not desire your time. What I want from you is the true knowledge of who? Of me. You get it from in your understanding of God. You get it from in other things. You get it from in other things. How the true knowledge of God and the rest of all of things. In the same chapter 6, notice verse 3. The Bible says, Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of God. A true understanding of God will mold our spiritual devotion. If all you know about God is that He is, you know, He is this exacting and this no nonsense deity, then even in times when you falter, you won't approach Him. You will not go back because of what? You understand. Have you seen our children, even ourselves, messed up and back at our homes? Only to take leave and, and escape and go out. Why? Because of our understanding of our father. You very well know that the moment your father knows that you're pregnant with a baby, he will, he will kill you. And so you go out. You take leave. Why? Because of the way you understand your father. You know that my father, he will not take this now. My father will, will kill me. Your understanding of God shapes you all. And so the question you address is, what has God shown you about himself? Chapter 4, verse 1. That book, the same book of Hosea. Chapter 4, verse 1. What does the Bible say? Hear the word of the Lord. You too.
children of Israel, for the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. A lack of knowledge about God. Knowledge of who? Knowledge of God. I believe we are beginning to see why this was the problem with the children of Israel. A true knowledge of God. The book of Jeremiah, the chapter is 9. The book of Jeremiah, the chapter is 9. Now, Jeremiah ministers during and post uh, captivity. In chapter 9 of the book of Jeremiah, listen to what the Bible says. I read verse 1 to 3. All oh, that my head were water. And that my eyes were a fountain of tears, that I may weep day and night for the slain of the daughters of my people. Or that I have a wilderness and a holy place for travelers, that I may leave my people and go from them. And they shall, and they, they all, and they are all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. And like their bow, they have paid their tax for lies. They are not valiant for the truth on the earth, for they proceed. From evil to evil, and they do not know me, says the Lord. How will you? That was the problem with the children of Israel. They missed it in understanding who God was. So, who is this God? Who had God shown Israel? You know, I want us to first of all understand it in the context of Israel and then now get it in what? In our personal lives. So what is it that God has done to Israel or revealed himself to Israel? Not only to Israel, right from the book of Genesis all through the Bible, this is God's approach to us. The one chief design of the Bible is to recommend to sinners the goodness of God. Now, look at this. In the book of Genesis during creation, what did God do? God created first all that mankind will need, and then now he comes and does what? Creates man. Make provision for the needs of mankind. And then he comes, sorry, he tells man now, tend the God. Whatever God requires from us is based on his goodness. What he has First of all, reveal to us or done to us. Notice, when God comes to give us the Ten Commandments, what is his approach? He comes and says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? Nay, God comes and he's like, I am the Lord your what? Your God. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt? Now, in light of that, do what? Have your God beside you. So the basis of what we do to God, or how we relate to Him, it first of all begins with what God has done to our lives. And whatever God is doing to your life is only but a revelation of Himself to you. And if you miss it, then you get it wrong. You see? So God comes and He tells the children of Israel, this is what I have done to you. And because of that, I am this good God to you. Please keep my commandments. It is the same approach to us. God does come and does good things for our lives. He reveals His mercy to us, His goodness to us. And in light of that, He does it to the intent that you may reciprocate His what? We love him because he first did what? He first loved us. And God is not that kind of a person who only loves you in what? In what? He loves indeed. And that is why now in Micah chapter 6, you know God is like, what have I tied down to you, my people? I brought you out of the land of Egypt. When when this, when Bala, was it Bala Kabbalah? Bala wanted to, to cast you. I stood in between and he walked and saved you. Isaiah cries 
what more could have I done to my people, to my family? I dressed it. I didn't like food. But the response to this kind of love was what? Apostles going to worship other angels. That is what he's paying for in the book of Luther, in the time of Isaiah, in the time of Isaiah. They missed it in the understanding of God. That is why I wanted us to ask the question what is God showing you about Himself? You go to the book of Osea chapter 1. This book is, this is the contention, this is the contention that God has with his people. In Osea chapter 11, this is what the Bible says. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt I called my son. And they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed to birds and burnt incest what? To images. Against what I have done to them. This is the cry of God. Verse 3. In the book of Hosea, when Hosea is referring to Ephraim, he's basically referring to Israel. There's a long history to that. Later on, Israel was known as Ephraim. Ephraim was the principal tribe in the northern kingdom. He takes back to the firstborn of Jacob, being disinherited of his rights as a firstborn. And so they were, the privileges were given to the sons of Joseph. And so that is why the principal tribe in the northern kingdom was Ephraim. And so in the book of Hosea, repeatedly, when God is crying to Ephraim, he's basically crying to Israel. He's saying, I taught Ephraim to walk. Taking by them by the arm. But they did not know that I healed them. I drew them with a gentle cord, with bands of love. And I was to them as those, I was to them as those who take the yoke from the men. I stood. I stood and it was and fed them. And in return, what did they do? So God was doing all this to the intent that God's people may see his goodness and respond with what? With love. But what did he do? What did they do? They did others. He only had good in mind by giving them the laws, the commandments. He only had good in mind by wanting them to only exist as a theocratic nation. But they got to a point where they were like, we want a king to rule over as a what? As a nation. Imagine how it pains God. In Hosea chapter 11, I see the picture of a parent raising up a child. Imagine the pains of labor. Imagine the pains, you know, the sleepless nights of bringing up your child. And then this little boy, this toddler, this, this boy grows up, he gets to a point during his teenage, and then now he falls his feet. Against you. Imagine how it will pain you as a parent. We may not imagine because we are not parents. <laughs> so, yeah, perhaps the parents who are here, they know what it means. When a child gets to a point, you raise up a child who may, who may pamuza makamasi, who may change the nappies and all the pains that come with raising up a child. And then the child gets to a point when they have grown up, they disappear. You know, it evokes the memories of the pain he went through. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. And that is how, you know, God is pain. That is why he's become to many people. Remember what I did. And then here, in chapter 16, we come and say, you know, you, you are left out in the wilderness and I picked you. I wrapped you with swaddling clothes. You've been left to your heart. To that, but I picked you. I formed you. And this is what you're doing to me. Spitting on my face. And that is why the message that Isaiah bears to God's people is Israel, behold your God. In Isaiah chapter 40, should be verse 19. Israel, do what? 
before the fall. Little wonder, before Isaiah comes to preach to his people, in chapter 6, God takes him to the throne room. Isaiah sees the holiness of God. Isaiah sees, you know, the way God is adorned by the angels. And that tremendously impacted his ministry. And that is why now when he is coming before Israel, he's telling them, Behold your voice. Paul was one man who understood what it means to be 
gracious. Why? Through the beneficiary of grace. Little wonder in all his letters. Do you see him missing to say the grace of God? He understood what it means for God to be gracious. And that is why it would pain me when other disciples would mistreat the words. The Gentile. The apostles of the world. To the Gentile. That was largely shaped by his what? Experiences in life which showed him who God is. Rather, through which God revealed himself to him. And gracious. That is why he was gracious to what? To the Gentile. The apostles of the world. Our understanding of God shapes our, our spiritual emotions. <coughs> Let me give this a nice experience and instance in the Bible. Remember the instance in the book of Exodus when Moses wants to see God? Exodus chapter 23. God showed himself to me, yeah? And then, and then, It's an interesting story. Let's go to the book of Exodus, the chapter, the chapter is 33. Now in chapter 33, from verse 7, Moses meets with the Lord. Yeah? He went and met with the Lord. Now in verse 12, the Bible says that Moses said to the Lord, See, you said to me, you said to me, bring out these people, but you have not let me know who you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, do what? Show me now your way, that I may know you. Uh-huh. That I may do what? That I may know you. And that I may find grace in your sight, and consider this nation your people. Moses demands, or rather, he, he requests to know who? To know God. Now, it gets him trusting in the manner in which God reveals himself to Moses. What has God shown you? What has God shown you about himself? What did God show Moses about himself? In chapter 34, the verse, remember God, of course, he, 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 he instead of Showing that like his form and features, God in what? He showed Moses his attributes. Notice the attributes that God reveals to Moses. Chapter 34 and the verse is 5. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord God. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed. This is what God proclaimed. The Lord. The, the Lord, the Lord God. How? Who is He? Merciful. Hello? Who is He? Merciful and what? And gracious. And what? And long suffering. And what? Abounding in goodness and what? And truth. Keeping mercy to what? For thousands. Forgiving iniquity and what? Transgression and what? And see, and by no means clearing the gate, visiting the iniquity of the what? Of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the farm and the fourth generation. Friends, it is not by chance and luck that God chose to reveal himself to Moses that way. God comes to us as a personal God. There is that which God reveals to you as a person. And He does that to the intent that He may shape your spiritual emotion. That He may, he may shape your what? Your relationship to Him. This revelation of God to Moses, it had a great impact to the ministry of Moses. In the same manner, God's revelation to Isaiah shaped his ministry. It did that once to Moses. Remember the instance at the border of Khan when God wanted to destroy his people. Remember the instance? What did Moses do? He interceded on behalf of the people. 
If you go to Hawaii City, I need to have this uh, quotation, but uh, you can go check uh, the, 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 the commentary on Exodus chapter 34. Listen to what she says. Huh? It was upon this knowledge, and what commenting on this text, of the Lord's suffering, I think this quotation is still from Prophet and Kings, huh? still from that Prophet and Kings. It was upon this knowledge, which knowledge? The knowledge of God. The knowledge of the Lord's suffering of Jehovah and of his infinite love and mercy that Moses based his wonderful plea for the life of Israel. When on the borders of the promised land, they refused to advance in obedience to the command of God. Moses stood in between God and his people. Can you tell God, if you want to destroy these people, you blow it up and you the book of life. What led Moses to come to that point was his what? Knowledge of God. What God has revealed to you. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and Lord, the Lord suffering, abundant in goodness and mercy. That greatly impacted the ministry of Moses. And even his life. And I was how we are going in that boldness to tell God, you know, if you want to destroy this people, then you brought up my it is because of that revelation of God and his understanding of God. And so the question is, who is God to you? Do you alone who is God to us? Yes, God is loving and kind and merciful. But who is God to you? What has God revealed to you? This was the experience of Moses. And we don't be prior to the experience that God has really life. But God has done that to the intent. If he is, his intent is to reveal himself to you. So that, through those experiences, through that, we may form a perception of God. And if you form a right perception of God, it will shape your entire life. See, the children of Israel missed it. That is why they found themselves in what? In total. If you see the laws of God as limited, huh? We would want to go seek out and, and, and get freedom and all that. But do you think we will find the freedom? Like the prodigal son, we will get to a point of reality that whatever God tells us is for our own good. If we see God as a father, loving, patient, we will appreciate it. It is because of ingratitude that we get to a point in our lives. When we don't have reverence for God in this point, it begins with ingratitude. And that is why in the book of Deuteronomy, God is like, My people, when you get to that land, then the land flowing milk and honey, don't forget about me. I have seen, I have led you what you want, of all the wilderness. I have saved you from Egypt. Please, when you get there, don't forget about me. That's what God revealing himself what? To his people. So the question is, what has God shown? And then as we are talking about this at this point, what has God shown you about himself? Yeah. As an author, having gone through crazy experiences in your life, growing up without a father or even a mom. And you've seen the providential care of God all through your life. When somebody mentions God as a father, you understand the difference than somebody who has gone up in service. You get it? The way God reveals to us, himself to us, in our personal lives, it is tailored to meet our individual needs. Or rather, God reveals himself to you personally through the experiences you go through in life, more of them. You know, there are those times you, you know, you don't know where you're where you're going to get food from. An exam is on Monday, and it's Thursday. When you don't have food, you don't have food, you don't have and exam is Monday. Hey, you have a paper, please. And somehow God provides. 
when you come to such experiences and, mm-hmm. and, 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 and you know, in your prayers and in your experiences, you mention God can have provided, you know what it means for God to have provided. Then you know, in the same perception, somebody who comes from a way of coming, you have everything in the hands of God. Not to mean they don't have a perception of God, they have it and be it in a what? In a personal way. Through the experiences they are going through. They could be having money, but they have it's been it's been marked in, in terms of you know getting sick and all that. And so for them, understanding God as a physician is what? It means a lot to them. May not be the same thing to you. You've never been to hospital, you know what you think. And so first God reveals himself to us personally. And he does that. His expectation is we will reciprocate his love. What has God shown you about himself? Answer yourself. Because I don't know the experience you've gone through in your life. But there's something that God has communicated to you. There's something that God has perhaps communicated to you in the past. That is done by a loving God, a merciful God, wanting to reveal himself to you. What did God show you about himself? If you want it, one of the chief reasons why Christ came to us was to what? Was to show us. The if, if, if your understanding of God is different from your understanding of God, then you miss it. Imagine God knew all that. He, he wanted us to get it right, understand who He is. And so, if you want to understand who God is, then look at the life of Christ. What was He saying? Isaiah says, They shall come and say, A virgin shall give birth to a child, and His name shall be called Emmanuel. Meaning, God revealed himself to us. Look at the life of Christ. That was basically the father. He was. That is why you know he was. You show us the father to be sufficient. God, Jesus was like, come on. Have you like, have you been doing all this while? And he missed it. Look at the life of Christ. How did, if you see Christ has come and then you see God as a non to God, then you miss it. You've missed it. Christ is God. If you've seen Christ, you see? If you want to understand who God is, then look at Christ. This is God in Christ. And that is why I'm not in the book of John chapter 17, verse 3 as I finish. The Bible says, and this is eternal life. That when you know you, the only God. The only two God and Jesus Christ who will be sent. Thinking of scripture is about us having two pictures of the Son of God. However, I'd like to remark that we will never get to a point of fully understanding who God is. And so all I need to give us a sense of himself. Because if you get to a point of fully understanding God, then it gives us to what? It gives us to God. It gives us a sense. And all through the ceaseless ages of eternity, we shall sit at the feet of Jesus. And God will be counting to us the story of salvation, the experiences he has taken us through. And God will be revealing himself to us. Even without sin, it was God's purpose that mankind were to understand him. And that is one of God's places other than the Garden of Eden. One of the things that was to, they were to engage Adam was to learn about God through nature. And so even without sin, still mankind was supposed, we were supposed to learn about God. And this is what? Eternal life. But they may know you, the only two God, and Jesus Christ for that person. As you pray, I don't know. Is that which God has revealed to you as a person? Through the world, through the experiences of God through life. 
There will not be the same experience with the Guarantee. And so that is why it is a personal question. It's not, what is God showing us? It's about what is God showing you. So think about it. That is why it's, it starts to, to our times, you know, revealing the experiences we've gone through in life and ask ourselves, what is God communicating to me? To me. And even in our devotion, as we study the Bible, as we read passages of texts, ask yourself the question, what is God showing you? What is God telling me in this text? Personally, God has spoken to me. Even in preparing this sermon, I was preached. You know, the word of God is a two-inch sword. It cuts the preacher and the listener. It pricks me. To avoid what even considering, oh, I don't think I should go. But such is the word of God speaking to us personally. So I don't know what you're going through in life. I don't know what you've gone through in life. I don't know the situation. I don't know your devotions and what you've been reading and what you've been reading. And what I believe is that God is communicating to you. And so the question is, what is God showing you about? We still come back to this question and the answer when we ask ourselves, what is God showing you about yourself? What is God showing you about yourself? And so, may God help us. That we would pause in the business of our lives, not in the hustle and bustle of this life. To our time to look back and consider our ways and consider what God has done for our lives and what God has taken us through. Because the moment we miss that, the moment we miss getting the right perception of God, we will miss it in our lives and our Christian work. We never be a greedy and highly recommend us to go into the third chapter, uh, Behold the God, the book Prophets and Kings. The spiritual and understanding of God's people in Isaiah 10 were largely shaped by what? A misapprehension of God. It is not clear that we get the true picture of God. Shaped and custom to our personal experiences in our lives. So that we may not just have a theoretical knowledge of God, but a what? An experimental knowledge of God. Having experience in our lives. So that's when we speak of Jesus. You know, when Paul is speaking of Jesus, eh? and then the apostles, when they are going out to preach, you know, they tell people, we did not follow coming in divine table when we met one unto the world, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. They are speaking of a personal God, a personal Jesus. They have a you see how it shapes in the ministry, yeah? When you go out to tell people about God. You know, just talking about a God you read in the Bible, but a God who has revealed himself to me in your personal life. We all know that witnessing largely it does what? It tremendously affects ministry. It does. When you speak of a personal what? A personal God. So it is my prayer, friends, that we will go to ask ourselves the question, what is God showing? About himself. When you are to know, we shall be looking at the other question. Uh, we will answer the summary question. What is God showing me? May God help us. Shall we pray? Our loving Father, we need the Lord. You know, when Jesus gave us a title by which he referred to you and your flesh, your father of mercy, he told us, when you go to pray, say, Our Father, who is in heaven. It means the Lord to refer to you, our Father. That's when the book of Psalm 103, the Bible says, the word says, For the Father pities his children, so have I. And I have no doubt you. You are going to your own religions. And through this hope, I have experienced that in my life. And I 
all the problems you will confront us, but you are a father. And how even much more, Lord, we thank you for your this message that you brought to our attention this morning for our devotion, for our relationship to you, the shape that our perception of who you are to our lives, and the way you come. Lord, our is the prayer. May you put to our minds to have the true perception of you, Lord. Give us that eyes out. But help us to have the truth of you. And then in response to that, Lord, we may be secret into our lives. And pass the book of James chapter 17, verse 3, that we rightly put it. And we be among those who are going to invent it in our lives. And consequent to having a true knowledge of you. Help us all. For his last in Jesus' name. Thank you. 